All right, so let's talk about what some of the challenges to using behavioral skills training might be, just in general, but also what some specific examples might be during supervision. Um, the first one is, is what are you going to identify as your target skills? So we've talked about how you can use the task list and how you should be assessing um, the, the skill set of your trainee when they start supervision and then throughout. So look at, you know, picture what it is that you think they should be able to do. Look at what the BACB says they should be able to do and see where they are currently. Then start picking skills. Maybe you and the trainee together identify where you want to start. Maybe they're very interested in this or um, this particular skill is something that's uh, something that they would like to implement right away. Then you start working on those skills. Uh, you when you're defining your target skills, we need to make sure we're practicing what we preach in that we are also writing operational definitions for what does measure frequency look like? Um, what are we expecting? And uh, then breaking those complex tasks into smaller parts. So giving our trainees a task analysis of how do we run a token system? Um, so that we can clearly define these target skills for our trainees. Also, how do we model these target skills? So we've talked a little bit about how it can be challenging if your learner, uh, if you don't have a learner that's on those particular skills or using those particular skills, or you're not shoulder to shoulder with your trainee. So um, within our interactions with the training might be opportunities for us to model some of the professionalism. Um, we can use behavioral skills training to teach them, which is then modeling the target skill of them using behavioral skills training. Um, we might also make videos, uh, role play videos or animations. Um, Zoom has like a dry erase board, so we might be drawing things out like that, um, but it, it, find a way to, to create the resource that you don't already have. Um, and you might need to schedule some hands-on supervision sessions um, where you do uh, role play with particular uh, skill set in mind, or you identify and have them come and support a learner that they don't normally support that has those opportunities. Creating practice opportunities can be very challenging, but you can set up role plays. So just like with our learners, learning a new skill, they might role play. Then maybe we can write some scripts where we can role play with our trainee and they can follow the script and then we can fade out the script. Group training might also, or group supervision might also um, provide opportunities for you to uh, create more practice opportunities. Um, group supervision, I, I can't remember if I have another slide on this, but we do group supervision um, every other week. So two times a month, we have group supervision. And then um, between those group supervisions, we meet individually with each trainee. But during the group supervision, we have the opportunity to um, describe a new skill, cover a new topic, and practice with the group, which then creates more opportunities for practice because they can see other people also practicing that skill in the same time. Um, and then you as the supervisor don't have to teach the skill individually to every single person. You can have everybody come and participate at one time for a behavioral skills training lesson on a particular skill. Um, all right, so then providing feedback. Sometimes there are challenges to providing feedback. You have to make time to observe. Um, scheduling can sometimes be very challenging, but you do have to create the time to observe so that you can see um, how they are implementing the skill and where they might need more supports. Just telling somebody how to perform a skill is not evidence-based support for them actually changing that skill. Um, you want to target maybe one to two skills at a time. 
So only target a couple of things so that you can maximize your learning opportunities for those and let them master those concepts and then add in more over time. And therefore, you're going to have to prioritize the skills to target. What's going to have the biggest impact for your trainee um, so that then they can maybe learn more of the skill sets uh, more efficiently in the future? Some other challenges, uh, your trainee may um, not be as receptive to feedback as we would like. This is where you want to model that professionalism so that you are providing feedback in a professional and supportive way and also receiving any of their potentially um, less receptiveness in a professional way. So um, if they're going to be um, in, engage in behaviors that suggest that they are upset with the feedback they have received, that you do not react the same way, that you are receptive and you listen to them with their concerns or complaints about your own feedback so that you can model that professionalism. And then hopefully we can work on shaping it um, uh, down the road. You want to develop rapport with your uh, trainees. You want to respect them as individuals and, um, and care about them. And that doesn't mean that you have to be best friends with them and enter into a mul multiple relationship because that's not good, but have some rapport, um, mutual, re mutual respect uh, for each other so that you can develop that rapport and um, therefore they are more likely to receive your feedback in a more professional way. You do want to outline the, your expectations in your contract. So if there are um, expectations about how feedback should be received, you can spell it out. Um, you need to identify what that looks like, is spell out exactly what that means. Um, things we've defined would be um, maintaining a, a neutral uh, facial arrangement to facial expression, um, asking clarifying questions, um, but being aware, I think using a neutral tone is the way we phrase it, a neutral vocal tone, um, being aware of body language and things like crossed arms and hands on hips can be interpreted as uh, less receptive to feedback than having you know, your arms down or your arms in your lap, those sorts of things. So maybe you need to specify what that looks like. Um, and you might not know that that's a, a problem for an individual until you get started, but then you can specify that and say, okay, here's an area that I think we need to work on. Um, here's what I'm looking for. And you might need to establish criteria for that ongoing supervision. It's like, you know, maybe this isn't the best relationship or, or maybe our supervision styles are different and I can't meet your needs. Here's what we're going to try. How does that work for you? If not, you know, here, let me hook you up with some other supervisors that could help. Um, sometimes there are scheduling conflicts. Uh, that is the reality of life, right? Um, but it's helpful to create some routines and to use reminders. So our group supervision, uh, we pick a day and time and uh, at the very first kickoff meeting, um, and then we hold that group supervision for uh ongoing indefinitely, basically. Um, if everyone needed to change, we would change it, but it's a lot easier to plan if you just know, like, look, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. is group supervision, and that's what's going to happen. Um, creating those routines so then everybody can plan around those, um, using uh, Google uh, calendar uh, reminders or other alarms and reminders to help uh, you remember even if you are, you know, on site and doing your own work, that you're scheduling that time and it's reserved um, to be able to have those meetings. 
However, we do want to, you know, try to have some of that flexibility while still meeting the requirements. So for our group supervision does not change, but our individual supervisions, we can be very flexible with those. You know, we make sure that people are getting their, their four contacts for the month and that one of those is the observation. Um, but for the individual session, you know, if, if somebody's not feeling well, we can reschedule it. Um, it is a lot easier, honestly, to uh, have remote supervision um, uh, flexibility, right? Um, I can meet with a trainee on the weekend, in the evenings, early in the morning um, on Zoom without having to uh, drive somewhere or start heading somewhere and then things get canceled and then that changes my plans, right? Um, so maybe remote is actually a little bit easier to have some of that flexibility. 